Welcome to Mount Vernon, George Washington's historic Virginia estate overlooking the Potomac River. I thought it would be interesting to imagine a day in the life of George Washington, so I'm taking you with me on my first ever visit here. George Washington inherited this property from family in the mid-1700s, and he expanded what was originally a one-and-a-half-story house into the winged two-and-a-half-story home we see today. What's really cool is that while the outside looks like stone, it's actually made of wood that's intended to look like stone through a process called rustication. They paint it and then they cover it with a layer of sand to give it the texture of stone. Washington was known to be an early riser, often getting up at dawn. He'd get some work done, likely in his study, for a couple of hours until breakfast at 7 a.m. You can actually try his favorite breakfast food for yourself. George Washington loved what is called hoe cakes, which is sort of like a cornmeal pancake. He would have them almost every morning swimming in butter and honey. It is like a pancake. There's a little bit more grit, which comes from the ground corn, the cornmeal. It may be a little bit more salty or savory, I guess. And it's really, it sort of melts in your mouth, which was actually kind of important for George Washington. George Washington had notoriously bad teeth. By the time of his inauguration, he only had one of his natural teeth left in his mouth. He wore dentures all the time, and this is one of those pairs. These dentures are made of animal and human teeth. The human teeth likely came from enslaved people, and though it's documented that back then enslaved individuals were paid for their teeth, it's important to consider they may not have truly had a say in the matter. You can see the springs of the dentures. Washington would have been fighting against those springs to keep his mouth shut. He'd be clenching his jaw constantly. It would have affected his speech and his smile. It's also crazy to think that this is what people would have seen if he were smiling or laughing. You know, all of the portraits you see in me looks like he has such a stern expression, but obviously he would have laughed. There would have been much more to his demeanor, his countenance, his personality. So it's so cool to be able to imagine him laughing. This is the teeth that they would have seen. Elsewhere in the museum, you can learn all about the facial reconstructions done of what Washington would have really looked like. Which, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I live for that sort of thing. This is George Washington, age 19. He looks to me a bit older than 19. I'm just staring at his face, trying to imagine what it would be like animated. Also on display is the Udom bust, considered the most accurate likeness of Washington, sculpted from life in 1785. Back to the day. After breakfast, Washington would saddle up, he'd hop on his horse, and tour the estate. In Washington's time, the estate was 8,000 acres, five farms. Today, about 500 acres are preserved. Washington would tour his estate and oversee all the work being done. He was supervising. Washington was not the one actually doing the physical labor. At the time of his death in 1799, there were 317 enslaved men, women, and children living and working at Mount Vernon. They made up around 90% of the estate's population. I'm including some links in the video description for you to learn more about the enslaved population here, what life was like for them, and how their labor kept the estate functioning. It was the enslaved cooks and waiters who would prepare and serve George Washington's meals. At 3 p.m., Washington would return home for dinner, the largest meal of the day. It would be eaten in this bright green room. 
The Washingtons entertain guests here constantly. Right outside the dining room, you can see the key to the Bastille, famously gifted to Washington by the Marquis de Lafayette as a symbol of liberty. To me, the most impressive thing about the estate is its location. The gorgeous views of the Potomac are pretty breathtaking. The Potomac itself was vital to Washington, and fishing here was extremely lucrative for the estate. Can you imagine living somewhere like this? The mansion is about 10 times the size of the average house in Virginia during Washington's time. After a long and busy day, at around 9 o'clock, Washington would head to his room. I was so disappointed to see the Washington's bedroom undergoing maintenance during my visit. This is actually the bed where George Washington died of a throat infection on December 14, 1799. Initially, he was buried in this tomb, but as outlined in his will, he was eventually moved to a newly constructed tomb where he's buried with Martha and other family members. And that's the whole day. Thank you so much for joining me on my visit to Mount Vernon. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you next time.